All right, time for the year in review. Uh, as I mentioned to you guys a little bit earlier, we're going to do uh, by division this year as opposed to team by team. Um, but, you know, we'll definitely look at all four teams in the division. Um, starting with, uh, you know, I, I don't want to use the term the worst division, uh, but certainly wasn't the best. The Schindler division uh, won by Andrew Denenberg. Uh, your final standings were like this. First place, Denenberg with a record of 17 and 11. Uh, second place, Justin, uh, with a record of 13 and 15. Third place, Brian Deutsch, with a record of 8 and 20. And last place, your and my clown, Ariel Glicksberg, with a record of 6 and 22. Um, you know, the way the thing shook out, it, it, it looked, you know, obviously Deutsch and Ariel were out of it uh, pretty early as they were sort of battling for clown position, and Ariel managed to pull away uh, down the stretch. But, uh, you know, Justin actually had a little mini threat there. I know uh, Justin and Denenberg had a, a showdown in Week 13 that if, if Justin would have won, would have put him in really good position, but his team kind of crapped out on him. So it wasn't much of a division race. Denenberg basically had it locked up all year. Um, getting into the specifics, the best waiver pickup of the year uh, was probably Fred Davis to Ariel for only seven dollars um you know when he wasn't injecting himself with steroids davis was catching mad touchdown passes and cementing himself as the best fantasy piece in the redskins lineup so definitely a, a bargain for seven dollars um honorable mention uh denarius moore for two dollars to Ariel and uh doug baldwin for four dollars to denenberg um as far as the worst waiver pickup from this division would be concerned uh you know it would have to be – these are two pickups, but I consider it one move. Uh, Deutsch spending $50 on Dexter McCluster and $50 on Daniel Thomas in the same day. Uh, Thomas turned out all right. I think he had like two or three good games all year, but really nothing special. Certainly not worth $55. And McCluster was a total bust, um, except for, of course, that – Hail Mary touchdown that he caught against the Bears. Uh, very honorable mention, um, almost even a tie for worst waiver pickup, is Justin spending $42 on Thomas Jones. Uh, basically the, just as bad as Dexter McCluster, just not quite as much money as he saved $8 in the deal. Uh, speaking of $8, honorable mention for worst waiver pickup would be Denenberg spending $8 on Steven Ridley. Um, he didn't really do anything past his one good game. Um, all right, as far as the draft is concerned, best draft pick goes Rob Gronkowski for $0 to Denenberg. Uh, Gronkowski, you know, makes the argument for the best player in all of fantasy. The guy's a, a touchdown machine. I um, mean, he he's an absolute lock for Denenberg to keep, I'm sure, at, uh, you know, the low cost of $10. I would probably keep him for two years. Um, honorable mention best draft pick is Arian Foster for $73. Uh, this is really a bargain if you look at Foster's stats compared to Peterson and Maurice Jones-Drew and some of the bigger backs. So, you know, he uh, that, that probably would have won best overall draft pick if Ariel had not traded him away. Um, similar situation, Antonio Brown for only a dollar to Justin. Uh, Justin traded him away early as well. So doesn't make it much of a bargain if you don't have the guy on your team as far as the worst draft pick is concerned uh this would have to be 70 dollars for peyton manning uh by deutsch um you know brian shockingly dropped uh you know almost a fourth of his total budget on peyton um even after it had already been announced that he was having additional neck surgery he could miss the year um you know i remember sitting there and just sort of you know i'm, I'm not going to say anything but I was just kind of shocked by what was transpiring um you know it should be noted that deutsch was able to trade peyton away but it was for Rex Grossman and Matt Ryan, so it's not like he you know, was able to turn it into anything. Um, honorable mention, uh, Denenberg drafting Mike Vick for $92. Obviously, uh, Vick was not terrible this year, but he missed a lot of time, um, threw a lot of interceptions, and just was not quite as good as you would expect, especially considering uh, Denenberg dropped $92 on him, which is significantly more than some of the other great quarterbacks that were available. Other honorable mention for worst draft pick in this division, uh, Ariel spending $40 on Reggie Wayne. Um, all right, as far as best trade, we actually do have a tie. I really couldn't make up my mind on this. Um, the tie is first Denenberg trading uh, Michael Crabtree and a small amount of cash to me for Steve Smith. Um, he then was able to turn Steve Smith into Ben Roethlisberger. Uh, you know, Crabtree picked it up late, uh, you know, but really getting Roethlisberger to pair with Mike Wallace uh, locked up the division for Deberg. Uh, you know, furthermore, uh, you know, he didn't give up very much cash. He was, he was, uh, I was, 
mistaken in thinking I was locking up Carson Palmer. So that worked out really well uh, for Andy. Um, then the other uh, tie for, for best trade in the division was Justin getting Anquan Bolden, Ama Bradshaw, and Beanie Wells from Kraus for Darren McFadden, who never scored a single point for Kraus, and Aurelius Ben, who really, you know, wasn't far behind. Uh, Bradshaw did miss some time for Justin, but McFadden missed uh, every week uh, after he was acquired by Kraus. Uh, Beanie Wells had some incredible games for Justin, and Bradshaw came back and has had some good games. Uh, Aurelius Ben, I, I, th- I believe Kraus dropped like within a, a week or two after acquiring him. So that was essentially giving up three pretty good pieces for absolutely nothing. Uh, as far as honorable mention, best trade, uh, Ariel giving Reggie Wayne to Billy and got Ahmad Bradshaw and Sidney Rice back. Um, also, Ariel getting Owen Daniels from me uh, for Blaine Gabbert, who turned out to be pretty miserable as well. Um, all right, as far as worst trade in the division is concerned, uh, Deutsch giving Steven Jackson and Matt Ryan to Ben uh, and only getting Michael Turner and Chad Henney back. I know Michael Turner obviously was good, but Steven Jackson was really good, and Matt Ryan was obviously better than Chad Henney as he didn't end up on injured reserve. Uh, as far as honorable mentions for worst trade, uh, Ariel giving Maurice Morris to Ted for John Beck. Um, you know, Maurice Morris kind of sucks, obviously, but he does. He has had some value down the stretch, whereas John Beck has had absolute zero. Um, also, honorable mention, Ariel gave Eric Decker and Michael Bush to Justin uh, for Jeremy Macklin. Um, you know, Jeremy Macklin got hurt, which obviously you can't see that coming, but really didn't contribute very much while Eric Decker and Michael Bush have been pretty sweet. And actually, you know what? As I'm thinking about it, I, I'm I'm switching that. That's right. You know, we've got a, a mid-podcast switch. Uh, I'm I'm removing... Uh, honorable mention status from that Ariel giving Decker and Bush trade, and making that the worst trade in the division, and Deutsch uh, giving Steven Jackson and Matt Ryan getting Michael Turner. That's just an honorable mention, not the worst trade. Uh, congratulations, Ariel. Uh, as far as the biggest margin of victory in the division, uh, Denenberg had two victories of more than 53 points, actually. One over Justin in Week 13 uh, and one over Brian in Week 8. Um as far as the longest winning streak uh, of any team in the division, Denenberg won seven straight games from week five through week eight. And the longest losing streak, uh, believe it or not, it was Ariel. He lost ten in a row from week two through week seven. Um, and then also was able to lose seven in a row uh, later in the season. Um, as far as weekly high points are concerned, Denenberg was actually the only division member to claim weekly high points this season. Uh, he did so twice, once during week 8 and again in week 13. Uh, it should be noted, however, that he really was gifted weekly high points in week 13 uh, by stupid Oaks. Oaks didn't start a replacement quarterback over Josh Freeman, uh, despite several warnings about Freeman being out. Um, Denenberg was able to claim weekly high points by less than one total uh, one total point. I think it was by like six tenths of a point. Uh, while Oaks had 19 points sitting on his bench and Alex Smith. So you know Denenberg was able to win it twice, uh, but it should be noticed noted that one of them was almost by default. Um, and then as far as the matchup of the year is concerned, um, you know, we had some ones that were a little bit bigger uh, in, in their buildup and in their hype, but didn't really deliver. Um, I would say the most exciting matchup of the year was Justin beating Denenberg in week two uh, by 0.42 points. So less than half a point. Um, Rather than try and sum it up now, I'll just read you an excerpt from the uh, Monday morning update. Uh, As an aside, please take the time to recognize that Denenberg lost by less than a point a week after winning by less than a point because Jeremy Macklin had a bananas game and D's big money quarterback Mike Vick went down with the first of what should be several concussions this season. Uh, If it makes you feel any better, D, Jamal Charles tore his ACL and screwed Justin's team worse than Chad Ochocinco. Uh, so, you know, as I uh, mentioned earlier, Denenberg obviously was the division winner. Uh, we did get the clown coming from this division, so it was certainly newsworthy. Um, as far as, you know, playoff position is concerned, uh, Denenberg is playing Plotzker uh, in the first round of the playoffs, and I got to say, uh, it does not look good for Denenberg at all. Ben Roethlisberger is hurt pretty bad. I know he was able to come back in and play on it, but they might, um, you know, he might not be able to play. Uh, what makes that an issue is that it's a Monday night game, and so if Denenberg waits on it, um, you know, he might be in some trouble. What I would recommend he does is drop Kevin Cobb's, Kevin Cobb's carcass and pick up Charlie Batch just in case or uh, start Dan Orlovsky uh, instead. So, um, you know, it doesn't look too good for him. Mike Vick is going to play, but he's playing against the Jets. 
Um, he does have Gronkowski against the Broncos, but, you know, obviously Plotzker's pretty stacked. He's got Rodgers against uh, the Chiefs, and he's got, uh, you know, uh, Eli and Manningham playing against the Redskins. So I would uh, be pretty stunned if Plotzker lost that. Um, just to get this in here, I'm going to do the uh, division uh, year in review for both the Lane Bryant division and the Shame of Sherwood division next week. But uh, just to get in a little playoff preview between Ted and Oaks, um, you know, this one obviously is – a lot closer um, as far as the matchups are concerned. Oaks is, is pretty heavy in the Cowboys with Romo and Witten. Um, they play at the Bucks on Saturday night, and the Bucks defense has been pretty pathetic. So that could be uh, you know a lot of points scored there. Uh, you know, however, his receivers are, are, are sort of on some thin ice. Mike Williams is playing against the Cowboys in that same game. Uh, Vincent Jackson is playing against the Ravens. Who the, uh, you know the Chargers probably aren't going to do so well against. Uh, you know, but Chris Johnson does get to go play the Colts. Uh, meanwhile, for Ted, you know his quarterback combo is always where you got to look. Uh, Newton, you know, probably has his toughest test of the year. He plays at the Texans, and Brady uh, is playing the Broncos, uh, who, you know, if last week is any indication, uh, their defense is going to find some way to shut the other team down. So, really, I'm pulling the upset here. I think Oaks is going to get the win. Um, I wouldn't count Ted out, obviously, as he has a pretty good squad, but he is starting the son of Satan himself, Marion Barber. So, I would say, uh, just keeping that in mind, Oaks will win. I'm predicting an all-Lane Bryant final, uh, and we'll touch on predictions for that next week but uh, otherwise thanks for listening schindler division thanks for competing